guys, in this video I will be teaching you how to play the Pokemon trading card game. The first set step in setup is to lay out the mats. Once you've laid out the mats, you want to put your coin onto the side. And you also want to put the damage count on the side. And now we need to get the decks ready. Both players can choose to either have a 30 card deck or a 60 card deck. A uh, 60 card deck is more preferable because the game lasts longer. So you want to shuffle out your deck and place it onto the board. Mine are already shuffled, so player A is going to have this deck. And player B is going to have this deck. And now both players have to draw seven cards. So let's do that. Okay, now that we've drawn seven cards, the next step is to look through your hand for any basic Pokemon. And if we look closely, a basic Pokemon will have a little tag up here that says basic, and then we'll have the name of the Pokemon. But as we can see, we only have energy and we have trainer cards. So we want to form a mulligan, which means we're going to shuffle our, our whole hand back inside the deck. So let's do this real quick. And then we're going to pick up another seven cards. And now because you performed mulligan, the other trainer gets to draw another extra card, which is quite bad for you. And if we look through it this time, we can see that we actually have a basic Pokemon, Zamazenta, right here. And now, the next step is to place your basic Pokemon face down onto the active Pokemon spot. Same thing will be done for the other player. And now, you must flip a coin to see who is going first. So, let's say player B is tails while player A is heads. So, if we flip this, we can see that it landed tails. So, that means that player B goes first. The next and final step in setup is to draw another six cards from the deck. These are going to be your prize cards, and you're going to put your prize cards onto this section over here. Now that we are done setting up, it is time to start the game. The first thing we do is flip over the basic Pokemon that have been placed in the active section. Each trainer now must follow a set of steps. The first thing you must do is draw a card. This is not optional, you have to do this every single time. So let's pick up a card right here. And we can see that we picked up a trainer card called Hop. Now, trainer cards can help you out in battle. For example, this is a supporter, which means you can only play one during your trainer card phase. And it says that we can draw three cards, so we can keep that in our hand. The second step you can do on your turn is totally optional. If you wish, you can put basic Pokemon onto your bench. So, over here, if we look through our hand, we can see that we have a basic Pokemon called Rookie D. So we can place it onto our bench. Let's take a look at an example, Zamazenta. All right, so on the very top right of a Pokemon card, we can see the HP. In this case, Zamazenta's HP is 120. And on the very top left, we can see what kind of Pokemon it is. Here, it shows that it is basic. On the very, very top right, right on the right of the HP, we can see the type. Over here, it shows that Zamazenta is a metal type. And now, let's take a look at the moves. We can first take a look at Guard Press, and over here, this shows the energy cost. So we can see it needs one metal energy, and this symbol means colorless. So we can use any type of energy to fill that in. And once we have the required energy, we can use the move. Over here is a damage, so we deal 30 damage to the opponent, and it shows the effect. During your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 20 less damage from attacks after applying weakness and resistances. And over here is the same thing with Power Rush. We need two metal energy and one of any type because it's colorless. And we can see the damage, which is 120. And here it says, flip a coin. If tails, during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. On the very bottom left, we can see the weakness. And over here for Zamazenta, it says it takes two times as much damage from fire types. Here we have the resistance, which is grass types. So it takes 30 less damage from grass types. And the retreat cost is shown right here. So say if we wanted to escape from battle, we'd have to spend two energy. And it shows that we can use two of any type of energy. And... Over here, we can see uh, what number it is in the Sword and Shield series or expansion. And on the very bottom right is the Pokedex entry. So we can see its ability to deflect any attack. 
led to it being known as the Fighting Master Shield. It was feared and respected by all. Now that we've taken a look at a basic Pokemon, let's take a look at a Stage 1 Pokemon. Now, a Stage 1 Pokemon is a Pokemon that evolves from a basic Pokemon. So we can see that this is a Corpus Squire. It says that it's Stage 1 right there, and that little thing shows a picture of Rookity, and it says, you might not be able to see it in small text, Evolves from Rookity. And Evolve forms are more powerful. For example, instead of 60 HP like Rookity, Corpus Squire has 80 HP. It also has two different moves. In this case, rather than having Flapping Glide, it has Pluck and Drill Peck, which is quite cool. Now let's take a look at a stage 2 Pokemon. In fact, many Pokemon can't evolve at all. There are some Pokemon, like Maractus, that don't even have a stage 1 evolution. Other ones have stage 1 evolutions, but they don't have stage 2 evolutions. In this case, Rookie D can evolve into Core Squire, which is a stage 1 evolution, and then evolve into this big guy, which is a stage, a stage 2 evolution, and it's called Corvic Knight. And it shows right here, evolves from Corvus Squire. And we can see it's much more powerful, with an HP of 170, two good moves, has Peck, which deals 50 damage, and Iron Wings, which has 130, and has quite an interesting side effect. You may discard two energy from this Pokemon. If you do, during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 100 less damage from attacks, after applying weakness and resistance. Here we can see that Corvignite is uh, 2x weak to electric types, and is resistant to fighting types. The third step is attaching one energy card to one of your Pokemon. Now this is totally optional, you don't have to do it, especially if you don't have any energy cards. But let's take a look at an example energy card. So over here I've already attached a metal energy to Zamazenta. So energy is what Pokemon use to use moves. So for example, if we stick this onto Zamazenta, we'll only need one more colorless energy to use the move Guard Press. So I stuck this on right here, and you can place our Zamazenta over here. The fourth step is also totally optional. If you want, you can retreat your Pokemon. In this case, I'm not going to retreat my Zamazenta because it will be able to tank a lot of damage. But, to retreat your Pokemon, you must play and pay the required retreat costs. So we can see that the retreat cost for Zamazenta is 2 of any type of energy. So, say if we wanted to retreat it, we would have to grab 2 energy from our hand and put it into the discard pile right here, and then we can swap it out for another Pokemon. The fifth stage of your turn is also optional. You can evolve your Pokemon. Now, one rule about evolving your Pokemon is that you can't evolve your Pokemon on the turn you play it. So, I can't just put this Corvus Square on, on top of my Rookity and say, Hey, I evolved this Rookity. No, 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 you can't do that. Now, you can only evolve a Pokemon if you have the first stage of it. So, let's say we've got this basic Rookity here. On the next turn, we can evolve it into a Corvus Square by just placing this on top, and boom, it's evolved, and it's much more powerful. Now, there are also some Pokemon that are just basic and they never evolve, like Zamazenta for example. And on this turn phase, you can also evolve as many Pokemon as you want. So you can have another thing over here, evolve your Rookity and that other thing. The sixth and second to last step is playing trainer cards, which is also optional. There are all sorts of trainer cards, like Pokemon Tools. Pokemon Tools we're going to cover in a different video, but for now let's take a look at the basic ones. So. Over here, I have a Supporter Trainer card. We can see that it shows Trainer over here, and this shows Supporter. You can only play one Supporter per turn. So for example, if we play Hop right here, we can draw an extra three cards, because that's the effect of the Trainer card. Now if we try to play another Trainer card, like Sonya for example, we won't be able to, because you can only play one Supporter card per turn. Now with items, you can play as many as you want. Like if you want to play a Potion for example, and then play, uh, play some Metal Saucer. You can do that if you want. The last step is to attack. Now the player who goes first, they can't attack on their first turn. So if this Gossip Flu really wanted to attack, it can't, because it's the first player's first turn. So my Zamazenta here can't attack either because I don't have the required energy. As you can see, I only have one metal energy, but a Zamazenta's moves require at least two or more energy. And by the way, uh, if you ever get confused on the order of all the things you do on your turn, you can take a look at this reference right here. Now suppose I could attack. If I could attack, I would say use Guard Press. And boom! Guard Press would deal 30 damage. So what we would do is we'd grab 3 tens from the damage counters and drop them onto the Gossip Floor. Then we can do the math. Since his max HP is 50, we subtract off 30, and we see that its current HP is 20. Here's a quick thing to keep in mind. Uh, when you use a move, you never lose any energy once you use that move. 
And also, you must always do the side effects. So, guard press, you will have to take 20 less damage on the next turn. Now let's talk about resistances and weaknesses. So say this Gauss of Fleur wanted to use Razor Leaf on my Zamazenta, it would deal 10 damage. But since I have a resistance for minus 30 on grass types, it would deal minus 20 damage. But of course damage can't deal a negative amount, so instead you deal 0 damage. Now say I'm against the Ninetales, and Ninetales tried to use a fire type move on me. Now this fire type move would deal twice as much damage on Zamazenta because we can see that its weakness is X2 on fire. Now, if your HP goes to zero, or below zero, your Pokemon is knocked out. So let's say Zamazenta gets hit by a really overpowered move, and then it just dies. Now, the opponent is going to be able to draw a prize card. So one of these guys right here that we set up earlier. So they pick up a prize card, and put it into your hand. Now, once you pick up all your prize cards, you win the game. So we've got to make sure they didn't do that. And now that Zamazenta just died, we have to swap in one of our Pokemon on the bench. So, we'll swap in Rookie. Now, the opponent can win if they pick up all the prize cards, but you can also lose if you have no more cards left to draw, because you have to draw a card every turn, and if you can't draw anything, then you lose. You also lose if your active Pokemon died and you have nothing left on your bench. Now we can see that this game has gone very far. As you can see, my Rookie D has gone a long way and is already Corvid Knight and has 3 Metal Energy, but now it is Player B's turn, so go ahead. Okay, Rillaboom, use drum beating! Oh my god, it dealt 180 damage, and as you can see, my max HP, HP is 170, and boom, Corby Knight goes knocked out, and you take your last prize card, therefore, you win. Hey! Hopefully, you guys learned how to play the Pokemon trading card game from this video. If you still have any questions, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section. In the next video, it'll be around. It's gonna be me versus my brother Omar. Stay tuned.